Well, did the mountains cause you any problems? I mean, there's, that's really different kind of scenery. Uh, the only thing I would say about mountain scenery, it's incredibly messy. Again, I get back to John Allen. I marvel at what he did and the, um, the volume of mountain scenery that he had. And, uh, you know, for me to try to, well, I'm trying to copy it now. Uh, and it's, it's just a lot of work and it's very messy. Because of plaster. The plaster, yeah. I, but by the way, I've been working with uh, that, uh, what is it, that foam? I think uh, Malcolm Furlow. Polyurethane foam. Polyurethane, yes. Uh -huh. I've been uh, tinkering with that the last few months. Instead of plaster. Yes, and it, it can look almost as good. Almost. Almost. I say almost because I would, I would like to use it in the distance. By the way, Alan, let me show you how I constructed some of my large mountains. I used this method because it w I found it nearly impossible to apply wet hydrocal towels and uh, plaster molds to a vertical surface. So what I did is I assembled the framework on the layout. As you can see, it's very heavy here. And I uh, put it together using drywall screws and Elmer's glue. And I let it uh, harden there. Then I took it to my workbench instead of trying to put it together in place there. And then I uh, stapled on this uh, chicken wire here. And after that was in place, I applied hydrocal soaked towels over it. And after that hardened overnight, I applied the rock molds, as you can see here. Well, that's heavy, yeah. This is very heavy. And uh, wow. this is the finished wow. yeah. uh, side before it's all painted in detail. And what I did is I detailed it flat on my workbench. I was able to apply all the, uh, the grass and the weeds and the dirt, and that way nothing ran down. It was, everything was flat. And it was much easier that way. 